Okay, so now please allow me to introduce our NeuroFest committee co-chair, Dr. Tim Hanks. He's going to share an overview of today's topic. Dr. Hanks is an associate professor of neurology, and his research connects general principles of decision-making to neural mechanisms, paving the way for improved treatments of brain disorders. You are in for a major treat, so please join me in welcoming Dr. Hanks to the stage. Thanks, Kim. Uh, so as Kim said, my name is Tim Hanks. I'm an associate professor of neurology here at UC Davis at the Center for Neuroscience. And I'm also co-chair of today's NeuroFest event on the theme of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and the science of brain health. Now, when we came up with this theme, we knew it was going to be a timely subject, but we didn't know exactly how timely it would be. If you've been following the news, you cannot escape stories on artificial intelligence, or AI, and machine learning. This has been dominating the news at NPR uh, almost nonstop. It's made front page headlines of major newspapers. There's been stories about the implications of AI for societal issues. And of most relevance for today's events, there's stories about the implications of artificial intelligence and machine learning for science and healthcare. So what exactly is artificial intelligence and what is all the fuss about? Well, in its simplest form, artificial intelligence is the ability to produce intelligent behavior from machines, oftentimes with the help of some relevant set of input. And so uh, I bet when you look at this big empty box here for the machine, many of you are thinking of things that come from movies or literature. But the reality is oftentimes much more simple. And I invite you to consider a much more simple case of a periodic vacuum. Now, this example helps to highlight an important point about artificial intelligence, and that is that the intelligent behavior that comes from this is a range of complexity. It is much easier to build an AI system for a self-driving vacuum, for instance, than it is to build an AI system for a self-driving car. Nonetheless, both of them can be considered artificially intelligent. So I want you to stick with the simple example of the robotic vacuum, and I'm going to explain how artificial intelligence works in its simplest form. The key point for designing an AI system is having different types of output for distinct types of input. And so this example helps to illustrate this really well. If we have this robotic vacuum, it might have a front-facing camera and have this perspective right here. And ideally, it would recognize this as a carpet, and then it would move forward and continue to vacuum. In contrast, it might have a different perspective at a different moment in time. What I'm showing you here, ideally it would recognize this as a wall. An intelligent robotic vacuum behavior in this case might be to change direction. And if this vacuum is really smart, it might even be able to recognize this as a dog and then remain perfectly still so it doesn't become the object of fetch. So the key point I want to illustrate is that a major part of AI is making sense out of complex input. And this is something we'll see throughout today's talks for how we apply these technologies for understanding the science of brain health. So how does artificial intelligence achieve this? This brings me to the se second theme of today's NeuroFest event, which is machine learning. What exactly is machine learning? Well, broadly speaking, machine learning is a set of tools that allows us to understand structure from complex input. So in this case, what is the structure that needs to be discovered for this robotic vacuum? It needs to distinguish carpet from wall from dog. But it doesn't just have these inputs right here. It has many other types of input, what we oftentimes call data. So it has to be able to recognize this perspective as carpet, but also these perspectives as carpet. It needs to be able to recognize this perspective as wall, but also these perspectives as wall. This as dog, but also these as all dog. And so this is what the techniques of machine learning can potentially allow us to do. The reason why it's called machine learning is it can be used by machines to learn to recognize complex patterns from diverse data and then determine what decisions to make based on those patterns. And this brings me to something that will also come up throughout all of today's talks. How do we discover complex patterns from big data 
and how can we apply this to understanding the science of brain health. Now coming back to the thing that I used to introduce the talk at the very beginning, the timeliness of this subject, why exactly is it so timely? Well, the reason why is because there's been tremendous advances in artificial intelligence and machine learning over the last few decades, years, months, and even weeks. So if we look at some of the major milestones, not surprisingly, some of the most salient milestones are those comparing the performance of artificial intelligence against human capacities. So many of you may remember that in 1997, a computer-based chess playing system named Deep Blue was able to, for the first time, beat the world champion chess player, Garry Kasparov, in that year. And this was a huge achievement for AI. In 2011, many of you may also remember that a computer question answering system, referred to as Watson, was able to exceed the performance of the best human contestants in the game show Jeopardy, an even bigger milestone. Then in 2016, another computer-based system that played Go, named AlphaGo, was able to beat the best human competitors in the game of Go, which is even more complex than chess. Now the reason why I bring up this example in particular is because this was made achievable through advances in machine learning in particular. And these same advances have continued to push the envelope for what is achievable in AI in the ensuing years, months, and like I said, even weeks. So if we go to July of last year, you may have come across this Dolly 2 image generation system. What this system lets you do is give a written description and it produces an image based on that. So I gave it this description. I said, an impressionistic oil painting of an indoor festival of neuroscience. I hope that sounds familiar. And this is what it produced. So I hope that we can match the energy today of what's conveyed in this image alone. Now, this same technology, even more recently, in November of last year, was used to uh, release this text generation system known as ChatGPT that many of you have heard about. This also takes written text as input, but now produces text as output, almost like a conversation, hence the name. So I gave it this input. I said, write a sonnet about UC Davis NeuroFest, and this is what it produced. In Davis, there's a festival of the brain where neurons fire and synapses connect, a gathering of scientists not in vain to share their research thoughts and intellect. UC Davis NeuroFest, a grand affair, where minds unite to learn and to explore, from cutting edge tech to treatments rare, innovative ideas to cure and restore. That's not me. <laughs> uh, it produced this, this was only the beginning of what it produced. It did it on this single prompt with no other context, and it did it in a matter of seconds. So you can really appreciate why this has been making such big headlines recently. So there's a lot that we could talk about with regard to artificial intelligence and machine learning, but we're gonna focus on one aspect of it here today, and that's the implications for helping us in our understanding of the science of brain health. And in making that connection, I wanna emphasize one point in particular, which is the immense complexity of the human brain. This is a side-on view of a human brain here. You can begin to appreciate its complexity from this convoluted mass of tissue. But if you zoom in further, you can appreciate that complexity to a greater degree. Each human brain consists of more than 80 billion individual neurons. And to put this number in perspective, that's more than 10 times the number of people on Earth. These neurons are organized in highly elaborate and refined neural circuits with many connections between them. So if we zoom in further, we can look at some of these connections. These are referred to as synapses. These are where chemical messages are sent between neurons. There are more than 100 trillion synapses on average in the human brain. So if we carry that same societal analogy forward, that's like each neuron on average having greater than 1,000 neuron friends in constant close communication. So this is an immensely complex system, I would argue the most complex in the known universe. We've made really tremendous progress in understanding how it works, but there's still a huge number of unanswered questions. And so our theme here today is how we can use the tools of artificial intelligence and machine learning to make faster progress in answering those questions. And so I wanna leave you off with one final analogy that I hope really gives you a good picture for how these tools can allow us to make sense of complex data. 
And so this is, analogy is very similar to a situation that we oftentimes face as neuroscientists, where we have complex data and we're trying to find the structure in that data. Here you have a bunch of irregular shapes and variations of colors. There doesn't seem to be an obvious structure from this particular perspective. What artificial intelligence and machine learning can help us do is find the perspective in these sorts of complex data where this all comes together and makes sense. And so if we just look at this from multiple different perspectives, eventually a coherent picture emerges. And so I want you to keep this example in mind as you listen to today's talks. This is the main idea that permeates all of the talks you will hear. How is it that artificial intelligence and machine learning can help us as scientists learn to find structure in complex data and what cohesive picture emerges from that perspective?